and welcome to this video. This is the second instalment of the How Far to That Star series and today we're going to have a look at an effects called Parallax. Let me just double check that I've spelled that correctly. Yes I have, Parallax. Okay, so Parallax is a technique that we use for finding out how far away stars are. I'm going to quickly show you a couple of pictures to demonstrate how this same effect can be used on planet Earth to find out how far away things are. Okay, so here is the scene, a photograph taken by a photographer, and you notice we've got some stuff in the foreground and some stuff in the background. Now if our photographer takes this photo and then takes 20 meters or walks 20 meters over to the, over to the left and takes the same picture again, exactly the same location but just 20 meters over to the left, what you notice is the things in the foreground appear to have moved much more than the things in the background. I'll go back to the original one. There might be a small amount of movement. The, the trees appear to move. Look, see where these trees are. They're blocking off certain houses. This tree here is slightly to the left of the tower here. Move over this way. Other trees slightly underneath the tower. But keep your eyes on the tower and jump in between these two. It, it doesn't appear to move very much at all. So, th But the objects in the front certainly appear to move a great deal. The objects in the back don't appear to move very much. It is possible mathematically to study two pictures and work out how far is one object moved, how far is another object moved, and then if I know how far the photographer's moved, then we can do some geometry here. We can construct a triangle, and if I know this distance, and I can measure the change in angle between these, I can do some sums and I can work this out. And we use this same method, and it's called parallax, we use this same method for studying stars. I'm going to show you how. So here, oops, here is a picture that I've drawn of our Earth going around the sun. And in the background up at the top, we've got a very distant star that's very far away. Now, you'll notice, first thing you'll notice here is we've got two planet Earths here. The reason there are two is because I've got one in drawn in its position in January and the other is drawn six months later. So January, uh, what comes next? February, March, April, May, June, July. And here is the Earth in July. Now if you look up in the sky and measure the angle to a star in January, you'll come up with one answer. You find out what the angle is. Six months later, do the same thing and measure what the angle is compared in July and it's got a slightly different position in the sky. And that difference in angle we can use to do a calculation. We are able to do that because we know the size of our orbit. And so we've got a triangle here and we've made a measurement of an angle. And by making this measurement of the angle and by knowing this distance here, we've suddenly got a situation, a triangle that allows us to, to work out. And it's quite simple how to do it. It's using Pythagoras. And look, if we split up this triangle like this, you can see we've got two right angled triangles. And anybody doing GCSE maths will know that if you've got a right angled triangle, you can use trigonometry to work out what's going on. What we do is we call this angle here, this is the parallax angle. Or sometimes people refer to it, it's the same thing really, as the angle of parallax. But yeah, this is the parallax angle. This is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And we can use this to work out how far away is this object, how far away is this star from us, or how far away is it from the sun. This is the same picture, exact same situation, but I've drawn it on its side. And we've got some slightly different labels in here. This distance here at the end, the distance from the Sun 
out to the earth and notice they've gone for June and December still six months apart this side is labeled B this distance here in the middle the distance from our star to the center of the Sun they call this distance L and here we've got in the middle this angle of parallax and now notice a slight slight strange bit of um, notation here a over 2 because obviously that's the whole angle you've had you've split it in half to work out this triangle here so this the angle of parallax is half the the big angle where does this why do we bother with this half thing well look if you in d december if you in december put your telescope facing exactly in this direction and then in June you put it facing in the exact same direction again A is the angle how much do I have to adjust my telescope by to focus exactly on that same star and the angle of parallax is half the angle that you have to turn back to face the star this could be a tricky point in an exam question so watch out for this are you using A or are you using A over 2 make sure in your calculations we're going to use this A over 2 the angle of parallax is really important in any calculations that we're going to do and why is that? because we can use a right angle triangle we've got here was the earth here was the center of the sun and here was the star and we've got a right angle triangle now we've got the opposite side the adjacent side and here is our angle of parallax this is the I'm now I'm not I'm not going to go through a math lesson here and tell you how this is derived all I'm going to do is give this to you and we're going to see if we can use it to find out this distance L you need to do the sum B divided by tan P so in your calculator you'd put in your value of B and then you do divided by tan P and this is a method that scientists use to find out how far away stars are and it's called parallax okay I'd like you to have a go at trying a few of these questions these here we go here's a few questions for you to do only three three different triangles that you need to use parallax for jump back and find out the oh actually I'll make it easy on you I'm too kind to you guys L is equal to B divided by tan P I'd like you to have a go please and find out the answers to questions 1, 2 and 3 the missing dimensions on these answer me alright hopefully you've had a go at that I'm going to quickly run through them now with you so question 1 we've got B is over here we've got our angle P is 30 degrees and we're trying to find L so L is going to be equal to 500 divided by tan 30 so in my calculator I do 500 divided by 10 30 and it comes up with an answer of L is equal to 866 all right now for question 2 we've got a similar situation but this time we need to find B rather than L so writing out the equation here we've got that L is equal to B divided by 10 P now if I need to find B what well B's on its own on the top here I'm going to need to move the whole of 10 P up to the other side and it's, it's a divide on this side so it's going to become a multiply so what we're going to get for this question is that L multiplied by tan P is equal to B L is 1.6 by 10 to the 5 and P is 15 degrees so just in my calculator I need to do 1.6 by 10 to the 5 multiplied by tan 15 stick it all in and get an answer for B so if I do that 1.6 by 10 to the 5 multiplied by tan 15 equals Right, it's coming out with quite a long answer here I've got 42,871 
But you see how they've done theirs in standard index form. I'm going to do mine as well. So rather than do 42871, I'm going to do it to one decimal place. Actually, look, I'll, sh I'll show you over here what I'm going to do. So the answer on my calculator it says 42871.87. Now we don't need all of this detail. I'm going to do it in standard index form. I'm going to do it to one decimal place. So that's going to be 4. Point. Now it's not going to be 2 because this and 8 causes it to round up. So it's going to be 4.3 by 10 to the how many decimal places? How many? So 1, 2, 3, 4 by 10 to the 4 meters. So the answer is 4.3 by 10 to the 4 meters. Question 2. Okay, and I'm going to have a quick go again at question 3. Well, not again, question three. I'm going to do question three. All right, so use the same equation. L equals P. Nope, no, it doesn't. L equals B over tan P. And this time we're finding L again, so I already have what I need. So L is equal to, I'm going to say I already have what I need. I mean, I don't need to rearrange it. So to find out, L, it's 1.5 by 10 to the 11 divided by tan 0 0.5. Sit that into the calculator, and the calculator comes up with for me 1.7 by 10 to the 13 meters. So you hopefully should have got the same thing for your three questions. Now it's time for our wrap-up. Let's give it everything we've got. Ready? Begin. So, let's wrap it up. Today we've looked at parallax. What is parallax? A calculation system that allows you to work out how far away stars are. What you do is you record your angle to the star at one half of the year, and then six months later you record the angle to the star and it allows you to form this right angle triangle. The angle of parallax is half of this total angle here. It's the angle in one of the right angle triangles here. And if we use this right angle triangle, we're able to then do a sum which lets us work out the distances involved. And just sliding down here, the sum that we use the distance between the star and the sun, L, this longest side of the triangle, is equal to B, the distance between the Earth and the sun, divided by tan P.